Hello ladies and gentlemen, Matt Duarte here and welcome to the commentary on Doctor Who Figure Adventures Series 2 Finale The Time Lord's Bane Part 2 Yes, um, most, most, mostly pretty much as I said, men mentioned in my last commentary that uh, I, I was actually intending to make this a singular episode um, but due to production problems, due to time management issues, uh, as well as some technical issues on my uh, Apple Mac, uh, the, the production was actually starting to get so slow and by the time it was getting close to the release date, I didn't have enough time to film and edit the entire episode. Uh, plus the fact that there were some many script changes in both episodes that was happening. Um, Oh, I had no choice but to split Never into two man. parts. Um, oh, woman. And the same can be said for part two as well, because uh, when I first released it on uh, the Who Editor channel, I mean, I like I like I said, I was actually intending it to be, uh, you know, like a, a you know a one video, just you know keep much like you know just keep it a singular video. But again, because of time issues and production problems and. Uh, mostly, mostly a lot of cut and editing. Um, I had no time but to release only the first half of part two on the channel. But um, I guess in a way, I guess it does kind of build the uh, it kind of builds the ten the tension between both stories. But anyway, that being said, let's talk about this episode. Let's talk about part two now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, again, as I mentioned in my previous commentary, Listen there were so many multiple thing. outcomes no and scene alterations, particularly the way, the in part two. Survive. Whilst with part one was pretty much was pretty much sort of trying to work out how to build up the entire uh, build up the entire story to where you know, where it might you lead the Doctor, um, including scenes switching around. This one kind of felt more like, so how exactly did I want exactly to end this episode? Which, I did know how I wanted to end this episode, but how did I want to get to that specific point? How did I want the entire episode to play out to make that ending happen? Um, but again, uh, as, I, as I mentioned uh, in my other commentaries, the Guardian was supposed to be one of the reoccurring villains, particularly in this episode alongside Missy. Like, this scene here was supposed to have been the uh, scene between the Doctor and the Guardian, and the series, uh, it was pretty much them talking, which would then lead to the Doctor talking to Romana, which we then got in part one. Um, Pre, you know, pre, pretty much before, uh, yeah, pretty much just, just to sort of reconcile, reconcile before they get escaped. Uh, the scene was supposed to be, uh, the, the scene was supposed to be the scene where, which we actually got in part one. But once looking over the overall story arc, I did think we didn't have enough scenes with the Doctor and Mona together in order to make the ending we get have more impact. Or that it, it wasn't built up well, so, um, so I, I decided to have have that scene move to part one. Now I should say at this point, um, you know, they say they needed a time lord's regeneration energy to release Gallifrey. Um, that was something I was uh, that was something that got me sort of oh, I got myself in the corner because Missy and Romana are also time lords, so any of them could have done it. But then I sort of thought, well, the Why doctor was the, the doctors were pretty well, much the ones who activated that little orb well, thing in Dave the Doctor. So they're the ones who controlled the painting or the time lock. So they knew that they had to get one of the doctors to do it. And rough and as you can see, this was the doctor they managed to get. Uh, anyway, um anyway, uh, then there was this idea that Godfrey was originally working for Osiris. He was working for the Guardian oh. and Missy. As I mentioned in my uh, in my yeah. previous commentary, was to get uh, Freya back, and he was to have overheard uh, the Doctor Romana's conversation, and then decide to go and help the Doctor Romana escape. Um, and that was when the Daleks were supposed to have made their first. Uh, appearance. Even though the Guardian had nothing, to, had no idea of what was going on, it turns out Missy was the one who called the Doctor because the, uh, the original idea was that Missy was supposed to be hiding in shadows, and at that point Missy would have revealed herself to the Doctor, and the Doctor would have realized, oh, he is being played, and it also revealed that she's been controlling them the whole time. Now I should say at this 
coin when it comes to like the Dalek parliaments. The idea of having the Daleks pretty much have the Doctor under trial was an idea I had in time in my mind for the series finale in the early stages of the pre-production of series two. As I mentioned in when I did a commentary for episode one, there was like so many stories I wanted to include. This was one of the stories I wanted to do, and the story was originally going to be entitled uh, "Punishment of the Doctor" or "Trial of the Doctor." And at one point, I was uh, I was once called trial and punishment of the Doctor, and, it, and part one was supposed to have been called the Trial of the Doctor, and then this one would have been called Punishment of the Doctor. You can see there was like a lot of confusing titles issues, um, but uh, then I, but then I had the title the Time Lord's Bait, which was actually supposed to have been in the, the title of the episode for Series Three at the time, but I thought the title actually sounded a lot better since uh, the, the Doctor's Bane, the sort of course of his defeat, is pretty much trust is. Naive, naivativity towards his companions and his friends. Um, so I thought that title actually worked a lot better. And one of the ideas was to involve the Doctor wanting to get to know at least one of the servants of the Daleks and promise to set her free. But once that servant is killed, the Doctor is left out as an outcast and therefore taken under trial and punishment. Um, the idea of having the Daleks pretty much happened after I produced the Mission Dalek Figure Adventure short. That I wanted to use the smaller Daleks, which, in my opinion, looks so much, so much better in detail, uh, with a, a much better uh, structure than the actual five-inch figures, uh, as well as I wanted to include the Dalek floating platform. But the original idea was to have Connie return alive and well, and that would have made the events in the episode. But then I realised. Uh, that would have made everything really the events of episode good. one irrelevant, or the entire build up of the Doctor's journey in series two completely pointless. Uh, I wanted to include the Doctor's journey in series two complete. Uh, so, I, so I wanted to include Daleks such as uh, Dalek Sec as the Supreme, Rusty the Dalek as the Dalek Artificial, the Time Controller from UDWF One, and the uh, Dalek Mutant as the Dalek President or Prime Minister, similar to the ones from Asylum of the Daleks. But once I sent this idea to Sam Lloyd, he actually volunteered to create a custom Dalek for the Dalek Artificial. And it's actually kind of cool what he did. And it's actually kind of cool to have it in this episode that I I want to use it more in future episodes. Uh, with the escape scene, the Doctor was originally going to have a standoff between shooting Missy and Romana, similar to the end of time, which was... Uh, to play a part in Missy's plan oh, to turn oh, no. the Doctor to, to the life. dark side, so it's to speak. Uh, but once the Doctor cannot do it, Missy then oh, yeah. kills Ramona herself. This would of course the Doctor to regret what he has done and escape the station with Godfrey, who at the time, who, who was originally supposed to have been there. And that escape scene in the TARDIS um, was uh, originally filmed uh, with Godfrey in the TARDIS, but since I changed the scenes around and I removed Godfrey from the first half of this uh, story, I had to make sure that the scenes only included the Doctor in the TARDIS during uh, post-production. Now, uh, again, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, there was like, you know, there was, there was like a lot of story so, changes, uh, mostly around the villains, book. mostly, because uh, when Missy reviews herself, uh, we would it, it was originally also would have revealed that Missy had to do with Connie dying in episode one, and you know the Doctor would have pretty much shown his anger towards everything that Missy has done. Uh, but the problem with that story idea was that it would have little to no sense in the overall series arc. And also afterwards, we would have gone in circles because after the scene we've had uh, with the Doctor and Romano in the room, Godfrey get them out, they try to escape, and then the Daleks come back. We would have had another scene with the Dalek, the Doctor talking in the prison cell and then talking with the villains and then escape once again. So as you can tell, there was like a lot of repetitive scenes and pretty much like everyone was going in circles. Now, since we've reached that point, uh, w with the scene in the barn, it was supposed to have had the Doctor and Godfrey land upon what was originally supposed to have been the same barn from Gallifrey, the Doctor's barn from Day of the Doctor, Listen and Hellbent. And since Gallifrey was going to return and Atrios was in existence at the time, I did think the TARDIS would be able to find the Doctor's sanctuary. However, as you might have guessed by that, it would also make no sense since Gallifrey is still trapped in the time lock at this point. 
So how would the barn be able to exist outside Gallifrey? Uh, so I did think it would make a lot more sense if Godfrey has managed to find a house away from civilization to stay away from the doctor, to pretty much to go in hiding, uh, which actually worked in his favor. And as we can see, uh, it's another uh, doctor's speech. This time he's sort of questioning um, uh, his own morals, his own existence. Like, does, has everything he has done, will it be remembered? Will he be remembered? Because that was pretty much a point where, because when I was writing the script, I was at a sort of dilemma where I wasn't quite sure exactly if I wanted to continue doing figure adventures at that point. Because at that time, I was already focused on university work and I was really trying to find a job at the time. And I was also sort of thinking of doing like a sort of, like a sort of, uh, a five years video where it sort of focuses on my dilemma between doing figure adventures and leaving YouTube to do have a proper career. Um, so I can't, I, I, but since that idea did not work, I, I did kind of think it would actually work okay. It might be a good idea to do for this sort of speech. And as you can see here, it was filmed entirely in the dark. It was actually the first time I started using lights with the sort of candle or fire effect. It, it was it was after Sam Lloyd released Descent of the Doctor that I did want to use the same lights for this particular scene. Uh, even though it was kind of hard to see through the camera since we had the entire room dark, lights out and the curtains closed, and there were so many shots in the camera that you could not see the Doctor's face. And uh, also, you know, like, slightly out of focus at some points. And it was hard to keep the camera still. Uh, at well, some moment, but even though I, I think the speech line. did take a little too long in my opinion I am actually impressed with how we managed to film this entire scene the light the fire lighting I think really works in favor. I'm actually I'm actually glad that Sam allowed me to use um, The same barn wars uh, the same barn wars uh, The table which he also used in his own adventures actually that's that's the thing because this scene this particular scene was actually filmed before uh, the other scenes where we saw Godfrey in his own barn in part one. That was mostly because uh, by the time after I did that scene, I wasn't quite... Sam had gone off to university in, Bourne in Bournemouth. Uh, which, by the way, well done, my, well done, my friend. Um, I wasn't quite sure exactly I would be able to use the same, you know, the same stuff. So I asked I asked him if I could borrow the barn walls. And I, and I thought at the time I'd got my own table to use. Uh, even though it's clearly obvious that it's not the same table or anything like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, if there's one thing I would definitely change at this point, I would have changed the that sort of laser effect because uh, by the time I, I released the first half of the video and I released that scene, people thought, oh my god, did you, is Ramona dead? Not dead at that point, but um, I'm, I'm looking and thinking to myself, I, sh I should have made it blue. Make it look like she's been stabilized or frozen rather than look like it's, she's been killed. <laughs> That, that, that sounds a bit harsh, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's that's the one I would I would have definitely have changed it from red to blue, at that point. Uh, I should I should say at this point, I mean I'm looking at the scene now, the idea of Doctor looking at um the time ring, which I which which in my opinion I, I thought it's actually nice. Oh yeah, I just noticed I forgot to add in the actual figure. Um, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to answer the question. Did Connie and Keith get back together after episode one? Because, you know, the, as the doctor mentioned, uh, she will wake up in a couple of weeks, and when she does, you can do it again. I wanted to answer that question, did, did they have a good life? And, yeah, they did. Now, this particular scene, similar to uh, in episode one, as I mentioned, there was supposed to be like a sort of dream visual of the doctor dying uh, shown to Connie. Um, the idea for this was that Missy was telepathically talking to the doctor. And the original idea was that he was supposed to be on a burned planet. Kind of wanted to see this sort of image of Missy in the the Rassilon robes. That would be a nice vision, wouldn't it? Michelle Gomez in Time Lord robes. And then uh, she's pretty much just saying to pretty much giving exposition that her plan is to uh, in order to bring the planet back, you have to get rid of a planet. And the idea was that Gallifrey was to take Earth's place at this point. And then we would have seen like the doctor sort of drowning in the ground and then missy doctor, would have said no okay i am tell i'm sending you um, i'm not a hero my patrols to stand down until you bring yourself back now at this point the original script was that romana was 
killed, and the doctor's plan was to go go out, go hide in. And it was supposed to be that Missy and the Daleks were going to send out some patrols to find the doctor's friends to hold hostage and or kill them unless he hands himself over. And the reason this scene had to be adjusted was that one of the things I kind of noticed was that the majority of this uh, episode felt a lot similar to Series 9 Hell Bent, which is which was not a lot of people which was which was one that not a lot of people liked at the time myself included the only differences would have been that we would have seen uh would have been the endings how this one ends in a fight whilst help end ended with a uh, mind memory wipe but wait what about the time loss shouldn't they have been looking for the doctor at the point sorry <laughs> sorry i'm getting myself sidetracked um my lord now the idea, uh, I should say at this point, yeah, for this scene, uh, the idea was that Missy was supposed to stand next to the Guardian, the, and the idea was that they were going to be talking to the Emperor of the Dalek, or the Dalek President, and I had this sort of funny visual to have like a Dalek mutant connected, uh, kind of similar similar to the Emperor Daleks, however they, when, you know, the, obviously the Dalek Emperor is so big, but they actually go inside the casing, and they come face to face with the actual mutant, which was supposed not supposed to be in like a little tank. It was supposed to have been connected to like wires, uh, similar to you know, basically it was sim it was supposed it was he was going to be similar to uh, the design of Krang in that uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film, Out of the Shadows. I kind I, I I don't know why I kind of looked at that film I thought that's kind of like the Dalek mutants with <laughs> so I, and I saw for that would be a nice idea um but yeah when it came to like the actual production work I had no idea how I wanted to play it out even though I did I had like a blue tech plasticine uh Dalek mutant made I had no idea how I was going to make the uh, the Emperor Dalek even though I went to the Doctor Who experience and I took multiple angle shots of the Dal Dalek Emperor the experience I had no I still had no idea how it was going to how it was going to be filmed so I I had to take that idea out. Now, funny enough, for this scene, I mean, if there's one thing I sort of wish I should have done at this point is that I should have turned the volume up for my doctor because there's there's like, there's like a couple of moments where you can't hear what my doctor is saying. But I think in this scene in particular, there's no need because basically the doctor's pretty much just taking like uh, one last moment to look around his TARDIS before. Um, he says goodbye because he, he knows he's not going to come out of it alive and he has no idea if he will survive so he, he's just saying his final words to a, you know like an old friend especially to the TARDIS and I quite like the idea that he switches off the lights go out um, at that point uh, okay um, now at this point as we can see here Godfrey is talking to Romana the original idea was to have Romana actually appear as a vision or a ghost uh, affected by the time ring for when Godfrey puts it on. Uh, Romana was, was actually supposed to have died earlier in this episode and was to appear as a sort of ghost thanks to, the, uh, to Godfrey. And she was to be a sort of guiding angel or yeah yeah pretty much a guiding angel for Godfrey for when he finds the TARDIS. Uh, actually, it, it, it was supposed to have been a classic TARDIS similar to the one from uh, Name of the Doctor and Hellbent. And it was actually supposed to have been hidden behind the barn, almost like it was. It has been in that barn for years just in case an emergency happens. You're kind of, kind of like an emergency, uh, emergency transport. Um, and uh, really? Romana was, An incoming call. she kind of teaches Godfrey to sort of fly the TARDIS as, as well as help him through the time station, you know, through the time station, almost like a, you know, like a video game guy. You're like, you're, you're, you're like, you're, you're playing like one of those sort of first person shooter games and you've got like a voice in your head saying, turn left, go right, duck, you're, you're getting close, that sort of stuff. Um, but since Romana's TARDIS was actually ignored, was pretty much included because uh, including the TARDIS was pretty, pretty much like a last minute addition when I edited uh, Day of the Cybermen. Um, 
And I really didn't think it was actually used that much after Missy sort of destroyed it. Uh, I thought so. I thought it, it would have been it would be much better to have Romana fly in her own TARDIS, even though it's damaged from what Missy did to it, uh, to bring Godfrey back to Osiris to fight the Daleks and save the Doctor. I love I love the shot by the way. This was pretty much when I was I was starting to improve on my TARDIS materialization, and just seeing the TARDIS materialize with Daleks surrounded it's so it's so good. Uh, I think I think I think the effects on the uh, the TARDIS materializing in this game much better. Oh, um, I should say um, there was originally a scene uh, which I did film um, between the Doctor leaving his TARDIS to. Being taken to the Parliament of the, of the Daleks. Oh, oh yeah, that's the, you know, the Dalek Butin President slash Emperor appearing hologram. But, uh, yeah. but anyway, um, there was anyway there was supposed to be a scene whilst the Doctor was being taken by the Daleks to the trial room, uh, where he walks past Romana, who is still alive and well, uh, just pretty much waking up after Missy sort of uh, throws her, um, frozen her in, in that earlier scene. The Doctor would then ask the Daleks to let her go, because she's done nothing wrong, you know, she's done. And for which they do, they do let Romana go, which then leads to uh, Romana to run to Atalus, escape Osiris, and go and find Godfrey. And uh, I don't know why I removed him, maybe I should have included him, maybe it was because of time, uh, the duration problems in the story, but maybe it wasn't flowing that well, but... Or something. I, uh, I I I don't know. I might maybe I might release an, a separate video for Begin deleted scenes. Now the Doctor's regeneration being extracted. That was actually an element which was going to be uh, featured in the series one finale, Bridge to Eternity. It was an early idea to have the Doctor's regeneration be extracted, leaving nothing but his own clothes. You know, kind of similar to what you like when Time Lords get regenerated for the last time. They're nothing but dust. And it was to have the Doctor. You know. And it would have it would have been up to the companions to sort sort out the problem and save the doctor, uh, which we do get here. And with Godfrey kind of reaching his sort of goal to become a knight or a soldier, a leader, um, I think that idea worked a lot better. Phase one, go go go. And then, yeah, as we saw there, there's they've been attacked by unit ships, uh, Jadun ships, um, and then later on, that's oh. oh those, those are good shots of Daleks, by the way. I love film animating the Daleks. Don't know why. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, it's basically Ready? unit, the Shadow Proclamation, and no. we, we find out later Godfrey called upon knights from his own time to come and help the Doctor. Let's move. And yeah, much like a lot of action, I, I really, for some reason, I really enjoy film animating people in sword fights or fighting, Behind particularly you. in series two. That's why there's a lot of sword fights uh, in this series. I just realised. She was now stabilised. All right, then let's move to phase two. Um, now I should say the battle was actually a lot longer in the uh, in the original cut. Uh, we would have seen like a knight uh, at, at this point, this scene here, uh, we would have seen like a knight uh, teleport in front of Godfrey and Romana to destroy a Dalek. Uh, we would have seen a Legolas figure uh, teleport to blind a Dalek only to then get exterminated straight afterwards. Uh, which I, I should say the extermination effects had really improved much better in this episode than they did in like series one. Uh, the reason this scene had to be cut down was both due to the running time being approximately uh, five to ten minutes longer than the actual running time, and uh, as well as there was like a lot of time uh, running out. I was running out of time to release it, and I did think this scene felt like padding rather than continuing the story. It felt like there was like a whole bunch of action scenes rather than you know actually continuing the story of Godfrey finding the Doctor. Now I should say, uh, there were a couple of lines in this scene between the Doctor and Missy for when Godfrey rescues him, when the Doctor kind of brings Missy down. Like at this point he was supposed to, you know, <coughs> when she says, um, yeah, when we lose Gallifrey. Does he say in this line? No. This game is over. 
oh well, maybe he did. He's he's basically supposed to say Gallifrey had his chance, and the Doctor would have Missy. left Missy to uh, the Shadow Pocket. Uh, as we said, as he says earlier, he, he you know he was he, he was originally going to say, I think I'll let the Shadow Proclamation take care of you, and he he pretty much just left Missy you to sort of die, weak. which was kind of something Moffat kind of got wrong with Missy in or the Master in Dark Water until he's fixed it in World Enough in Time. Um, that was supposed to have been the moment, that moment, and sh for us she would have gone to What's from working with the Daleks to working with the Cybermen. Um, however, she did actually make the con it did make the continuity between this era and the official show to be a little confusing, especially for when I kind of hinted that Missy's plan with the Daleks, and thus with the Emperor Dalek build, you know, so giving us hints of what's to, what's going to happen next. Um, from you know, basically the plan where she says, "Oh, I've got a nice idea from the Witch's Familiar," and how it would have worked, and I, I didn't know how I was going to continue from there to Missy's first appearance in Dark Water, but I do think that maybe this this is what happens in between Witch's Familiar and Extremis. So I think the idea of Doctor leaving Missy to the Shadow Proclamation would then lead her to being uh, sent to whoever those guys were in uh, Extremis. Uh, much like uh, with the entirety of th this two-parter, one of the alternative ideas was to have uh, the Doctor kind of shoot Missy down after Rom Romana was then killed in the battle, and the Doctor would have was to use his regeneration energy to bring her back to life. And this would have also have led Romana to appear in UDWF1's Descent of the Doctor, which was the original I idea for the original ending. And there was supposed to be a post credit scene was to have Romana wake up in Gallifrey to find she's in the uh, <coughs> the UDWF one's uh, mo universe and she was to go and find the female doctor. Uh, I didn't think it works and and I didn't really think it worked in the tone of the series and I think having Romana die, saving the doctor would have left a much bigger impact for both the story, the audiences, the characters and especially for the doctor. Uh, it kind of felt like it was bound to happen uh, for me anyway. Now I, sh I should say at this point. Um, now I should say at this point. I mean, we're gonna find out later on. You know, he's then being attacked by the regeneration again, or, you know, which leads into that. I did film an original idea was to have. At this point, he was supposed to have been exterminated by a Dalek, and I did actually film hit the extermination. I even did the effects and everything. It looked really well, but. Uh, yeah, you know, but I, I then saw for well since we've had Time Lords being exterminated and die permanently, they don't wake up or regenerate or like that. I thought uh, I don't think it would work again for the Doctor, so I then decided to have him being attacked by again by the uh, the burning inside his regeneration Romana? cycle, uh, which would then lead to Romana pretty much sort of sacrificing her life to save the Doctor. Um, yeah, there we go. Sorry for everything. Um, if there's one thing which I think I actually did pretty well. Oh, for those of you wondering what she pointing at, there's a there's a machine at the back which pretty much sort of powers the entire um, security system, the entire engines, and but she's blown up and yeah, she's gone, dead, no regeneration, gone. And before the Doctor could even escape to his own TARDIS, he dropped. Oh, he's chance. finally going to regenerate. Um, this particular scene was always bound to happen. And if there's one thing I'm actually glad to have improved on, it's the regeneration and lighting effects. I mean, look at that. That is so cool. So proud of that. And yeah, I am so chuffed with how people reacted to that entire scene. And, um, you know, people were like, oh, I'm so glad to have been following this doctor. I hope he comes back. Or uh, I hope the new doctor comes. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm so glad you guys actually, um, which I I should I should say thank you guys so much for uh your comments of your reactions to the uh, all my figure adventures, um, now, uh, much like with Connie's departure in episode one, I did originally want to have Godfrey appear as a regular recurring character in series three. But at the time, I wasn't quite sure if Series 3 would happen to, this, to have decided. So, 
so I, I then decided to kind of have his story finish with him becoming a soldier slash knight of sorts, as well as starting a normal family life. And um, bas basically here, you know, at this point, he's just looking at the, uh, you know, all the <clears throat> his times he's marked, the days he's been waiting for the doctor. So he decides to basically move on. And in doing so, he's, he's left the barn, he's gone to a new place, and... He's basically started a new life. Um, so uh, this epilogue actually happened with the music first, which is the uh, four knocks from end of time, and then I just improvised with how the story would play out from there. Now I should say, I mean, if you if you weren't looking at this shot close, this would have been a beautiful picture. I just sort of wish I did a lot better. Um, Looking back, I do find it kind of weird to have Godfrey have a new girlfriend and wife after his previous girlfriend had died in pretty much the same story. Um, but I did like the idea of Godfrey learning to move forward um, and to, to have a good life after his experiences with the Doctor. Look at that. That's a that's a that's a terrible Photoshop image of, of the hair. <laughs> there was actually a point where I was sort of thinking maybe have Godfrey turn gay. I'm not sure if it would have worked from his entire story arc or character development uh, in the entire series, but at one point I but once I found out that the voice actor Ethan Burke was actually gay himself, I thought it would have been nice to have Godfrey turn gay. But I'm I, I'm o I'm open to suggestions. I mean I mean what what do you guys think? Do you think Godfrey being gay would have worked or not in the story? I mean leave in the comment. I actually I actually really want to know. Do you think um Godfrey would have turning gay would have helped, or do you think it would have been better if he just stayed heterosexual? Um, and uh yeah b uh, yeah basically yeah yeah he's he's there. He's gone back to the place because basically he says like his his last. Um, couple of days, you know, he's gone old, he's lived his life, so he's decided to remain the rest of his life back to the barn, and in doing so, when he gets back, he hears the TARDIS, he walks out, and, um, I actually wanted to get, like, a big close-up of the TARDIS, rather than showing the actual Doctor, just have the TARDIS sort of close, and, and the idea was it was going to cut to, cut to the TARDIS, almost like, oh, man, you know, I, I kind of wanted to raise the, audience, the audience's expectations, uh, to that maybe the Doctor's alive, maybe it's a, it's a new Doctor, and then all of a sudden cut. Um, but the idea for but the idea of not actually showing the Doctor was just to give keep it open to that maybe it's the same Doctor, maybe it's a new Doctor, but uh, and you know it, it was you had to wait until New Year to find out. So there you go, guys. That is uh, my commentary on the series two finale. I hope you guys enjoyed. The amount of talk I went into doing the changes and the script writing and the production work on this entire episode. Um, be sure to join me next time for the last of the Figure Adventure commentaries. For my recent uh, Doctor Who Figure Adventures, the New Year special, Great Spirit of Adventure. So I'll see you then. Take care.